Welcome to the Manum tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about position, movement, as well as rotation, scaling, v-groups, and setting colors. And so there's really two different ways to move objects. You can move it relative to the scene or relative to another object. So first let's move this circle relative to the scene. And what do I mean by that? Well, in Manum there's really kind of standard like edges and corners where if you call the object with the dot to edge and then specify a direction, then you can just move the object to a certain corner. So if I wanna move this circle to the edge or to the top right corner, I just invoke this s dot to edge, as you can see VS Code already recognizes it, but use self dot edge up and then to the right. Notice that the, dire the direction's all in caps. This is something called enumeration, but you don't need to know about that. And so if we run the code as, as a, we do it, as we have here, it's just gonna statically kind of teleport it from the center up to the right corner. Because when you, by default, most objects are gonna instantiate themselves in the center. So this is just putting it up to the edge. So this is pretty much kind of like gonna teleport it, but what you probably want to do is you want to animate it smoothly moving to the edge. So remember from last time we use self.play, oops, self.play, but this is going to work a little bit differently. So instead of passing up and right as a parameter to the edge function, we're going to pass it as a parameter to the play function. So we just do, do it like that. And I'm pretty much calling it without the parameter. And this is what's going to be in here, self.play is gonna animate it. So yeah, it just moves to the edge of the right corner and animates it. And now, another really, really useful uh, movement method is gonna be called shifting. <clears throat> and what shifting does is it shifts uh, pretty much to any direction, whatever, whichever direction you want by a certain amount of units. So let's say I wanna, we moved it up to the right edge, but let's say I wanna shift this, shift it back to the origin. How do we do that? Well, what we're gonna call, call in when the parameters of the shift method is we're gonna go down and left. And as you do more of these movement type functions, you're gonna notice a pattern that they all use these enumerated types, I'm pretty sure, but you call the directions and then you just add uh, whichever directions you want really. And this uh, by itself is gonna shift it down one unit into the left one unit. And what do I mean by one unit? I think a really good way to visualize position is using this screen grid object I found online. And really uh, by default, as I said, objects are instantiated at the origin usually. And so if you wanna shift them various directions, you have to apply a scalar to your directions pretty much. So first of all, before I do that, um, this screen grid was not created by me. I did not make this. Uh, it was made by El Tremo de Beethoven, so they made it. You can find it on their animations repository. Whoops, my animations repository. And then screen grid, yep. And then you can I don't really use this when I make animations, but it's a really good visual tool if you're starting out. So credits go to them. But yeah, if we wanna shift this, pretty much what we wanna do is we can apply a scalar to shift this even more. So this shifts it, this is gonna shift it two units down to the left and two units to the right based on the screen grid. So instead of one block, it's gonna shift two blocks to the left and down. And using our self.play command that we learned, that we just learned, we can do self.play, just because I wanna make this smooth go smoothly. And I wanna animate its movement. We just remove the, we just pretty much shift the parentheses to the left so that the method works as so. And then if we run this, we get that, bam, shifts down to the left. All right, let's say that we have a text and a square here, but I wanna put the text, the uh, square right underneath the text. So if we take a look at the code, 
I shifted the text to the edge, to the upper edge, to the border, but let's say I want to move the square next to the edge or underneath the edge. Instead of having to like do s dot shift and then up, you could do that and you could kind of guess your way. But if you're working with more like complex motions, that kind of can get a little weird. So instead what we can do is we can do s dot next underscore two. And um, this is a bit new, but this what this method does is it pretty much just moves it next to a certain another object and then you're going to specify a direction so let's say down you can also there is also another way you can also add in a buffer but i'm not going to do that for now so what this is doing is going to shift s next it's going to should shift it right underneath it or wait yes yeah, so it shifts s right underneath it and that's more of the relative side of the motion. All right, so now that we know how to move it right underneath it, let's say we want to rotate the square. So to do that, we call the object.rotate. As you can see, VS Code has already um, entered that, but we can rotate it by a certain degrees and radians. As you can see the angle here, so let's say we want to rotate this, I don't know, 45 degrees. So we just do four pi, pi divided by four. And what this is going to do is just going to rotate it for uh, pi fourths radians. If we want to uh, play it smoothly, we want to animate it moving, we just do self.play. But this time, as we know, we don't add the parameters of the function here. We add them separately pretty much. And that should rotate it. Let's say we wanted to rotate the text along with the square. So as the square rotates, we want the text to rotate as well. So how do we do that? Well, what you could do is do the same thing. You could copy self.play and instead of s, you could also include h.rotate, but that's kind of a bit tedious especially considering if you want to rotate mul multiple objects. So what we do instead is we create something called a V group. And let's say we're going to create a V group and name it, I don't know, um, shape and shape and text. And we're going to create a V group. And really, you just insert them into here. And what the V group does is it pretty much just links them together so that you can rotate just the V group. And the V group rotated applies the same thing to the other groups. So instead of doing this, whoops. Instead of rotating just the S, just the square, we can do S and T, square and text dot rotate. And what this is going to do is pretty much just going to rotate it and it rotate it plays the animation of it rotating we can also do the same thing with move movement as well so we can do sand dot shift let's say we want to rotate this and shift this down so we just do down and if we want to do apply scalar to it we can do so as well so if we run this should rotate everything and move down. And the last thing we're going to do today is change colors. So let's say I want to change the color to of this text because as you know by default the text is going to appear to be white if we just rendered this. Remember you got to always do self dot self dot weight whoops self dot add t. And so if we wanted to change the color, the simple way to do that is just any object dot set color. And as you can see, there's many different options you can explore. Um, by default, I, VS Code shows me this, but I, I'd actually recommend to play around with all these, but for now, we're just gonna set colors. We are gonna do by gradient in a sec. So let's say I wanna make this, hmm. But how do I know what colors are available to me? Well. 
If you look through the Manum library, you can find that, but an alternative solution I found was to really this Reddit post, which is insanely helpful. This is pretty much all the different levels of color, as well as the uh, letter levels. And to access the letter levels, you just do the, the color underscore the letter if you want. And I did not create this. This was created by someone else, but once again, but yeah. So let's say I want to make this, hmm, I don't know, uh, blue, blue D. And so I just do capital blue underscore D. All right, so we got blue D. And let's say I want to make this some sort of gradient color. That's another option that you often see. So first I'm going to scale this by three just to uh, make it bigger. That's what scaling does, by the way. I forgot to mention that. You can scale it. You can also do self.play uh, t.scale and, and you're moving the parentheses by a factor of three. So let's say I want to set color by, so let's say it's originally blue, but I want to set it to some gradient of red and yellow. So how do we do that? Well, after we do that, we can invoke the self.play method again, which animates a color change. So we can do t.set underscore color, set color underscore gradient set color by gradient and we can do red red comma blue I mean let's say I want to do red D no, not blue we want to do yellow uh, E I guess and I already I already broke the first rule that we just learned set color by gradient we do not do parentheses, we do that. Set color by gradient. The equivalent of doing this would, without animating it, we just do t.set color by gradient. t.set color by gradient. Parentheses. This would be the equivalent to what we're doing up here without animating it, but I want to animate the color change. So, if we do that, if we play, it's going to be do that and it's going to turn into a gradient. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video we're going to be doing some LaTeX formulas which are going to be pretty cool. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you some other time.